Hello everyone. Hey, thanks for tuning in. My name is Damon and today we're going to look at an article and I'm starting a new series here on my YouTube channel called Policing Police the Police. If you don't know who Police the Police are, they are a Facebook group with about uh, with over a million and a half followers and uh, likes. Uh, and they uh, I like the mother load of cop haters. I've uh, challenged uh, the ad admins to a debate and they still have not accepted. So anyway, they are affiliated with the site called the Free Thought Project. And look at this article. Police state worshiping cop apologists celebrate death of Daniel Shaver on Facebook. Now I've been commenting on their page on this video and one of their memes about the Shaver uh, killing. And uh, I didn't get included in the article. I'm heartbroken. I see they got a couple of uh, people from Facebook that they included uh their uh facebook deals but i didn't make it i'm gonna try real hard to make it tomorrow i haven't read through this article but i'm gonna go ahead and do that with y'all and share my thoughts along the way the byline or uh a subtitle a shameless police apologist have taken to social media to celebrate the death of daniel shaver while referring to the cop who killed him as a hero and a victim uh, I've never, I've been debating this issue for two days, and I've never heard anybody celebrate the death of Daniel Shaver or uh, celebrated the cop as a hero and a victim. So it's all bullshit from the get-go. Uh, let's look at uh, this meme that they got here, saying that the cop is a hero, victim of Obama's war on cops, and it's a good shoot. Yeah, it was a good cop, a good shoot. But uh, he's not necessarily a hero, not any more of a hero than the rest of the Blue Lives Matter folks that come in all colors. Uh, but here, they're implying that people are saying uh, that Daniel Shaver was a thug or perpetrator and that he deserved it. I have not seen anybody say uh, that at all. Uh, it's unfortunate that uh, Daniel Shaver uh, uh, did not act very wisely and he got so drunk that he pointed a, uh, a BB uh, rifle. He had two BB rifles, and he pointed them down at the people at the pool, so the cops were called, and for all they knew, uh, they had a mass shooting on, on their hands. And so when the cops showed up, uh, Shaver was uh, too drunk and got too scared to be able to follow directions. He reached his hand behind, put both of his hands behind his back, when he was told not to one time, then two times he put his right hand behind his back, and on the second time, one of the cops made the decision to neutralize the threat that Daniel Shaver became to the five cops that were there. There's been a lot of arguments about how they should have handcuffed him, but if the cops would have surrendered the ground, it would have went forward and got closer to the room. Uh, and, and tried to handcuff Shaver, there's no telling what could have happened. For all they knew, uh, there could be a, an, an army in that damn room with uh, AR-15s and handguns waiting to come out and kill cops. It could have all been a setup just to ambush cops. You know, because of sites like uh, Police to Police, Black Lives Matter, the media, and some politicians, the number of cops killed in the line of duty has increased over 70% in the last two years, and about 40% of those uh, have been assassinated by ambush. And the kind of people that you got that hang out at police to police, whenever I told them that, one of them jumped up and said, ambush, man, I never thought about that. Thanks for the idea. I'll make sure I share it. And that's the kind of people that hang out uh, at police to police. Uh, the uh, I, I've been stayed spent about three hours there, and I uh, noticed only one guy 
was liking my post. The rest of them were doing everything they could to shut me up. So we're going to read. Uh, you can check out my site uh, called ScrewYourFeelings.com where I look at police brutality, Black Lives Matter, and uh, people like Tariq Nasheed, Sean King, and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, I chose ScrewYourFeelings.com because one day a black guy and a liberal on the both day same both on the same day told me that it doesn't actually matter if somebody's oppressed as long as they feel oppressed they're oppressed so i started that site to battle uh the black lives narrative black lives matter narrative and uh i have a youtube channel at uh damon witzel uh dot com uh i mean at damon witzel under uh youtube and I have uh, maybe 150 videos on race and race-related related issues. Uh, Blue Lives Matter. Black that is Lives a quick Matter, way for you to die. Uh, now, just uh, uh, things like that. I even fight race realism, the alt-right, on my channel there because I'm against both black and white supremacists and racists of all types. And uh, my position is on police brutality is that there's over 750,000 armed uh, police officers in America doing enforcement interactions with citizens. And those cops have about 735 million uh, interactions with citizens each year. And less than a thousand uh, citizens get killed by cops each year. And only about between uh, a dozen, sometimes less, up to two dozen a year are actual bad shoots and unjustified uses of lethal force. So whenever you look at that, you look at those numbers, uh, uh, over 99.9% .9 of those uh, cops do a good job every day, every day of the year. And if you look at all the enforcement interactions they have, uh, it's so close to 100% that instead of rounding off to 99.9%, .9 you have to to uh, round off uh, to 100% uh, to uh, account for that because it comes out to like point then eight zeros eight is the percentage. I've got a video on this on my YouTube channel. I didn't uh, uh, start it up before. Uh, I mean, get it ready so I can show you before. But here is a video on the Daniel Shaver video of an ex-cop uh, telling why the shooting was justified and he debates his critics. I got another video from him coming. I got a video from Anthony Brian Logan, uh, uh, black conservative on this, on this, uh, issue, the Daniel Shaver killing. He also thinks it was a justified shooting. Then I have another cop, uh, that, uh, was interviewed by like ABC or something like that. He said that the shooting was justified. Then there's a donut operator, an ex-cop that does a real good job of uh, defending blue lives uh, and the bullshit rhetoric and lies that are levied against them. And he's on YouTube. I'm thinking about maybe even uh, mirroring his real good video on this topic. So let's go ahead and get to this article. It says, uh, in March of 2016, Mesa police officer Brad Brailsford was charged with second-degree murder for gunning down Daniel Shaver, an innocent husband, a father of two. The shooting was captured on body cam footage, part of which was released the following May. On Thursday, a jury, apparently blinded by the badge, delivered a verdict on not, of not guilty, and the rest of the body camera footage was released showing a cold-blooded murderer. Blinded by the badge, huh? Yeah, I had uh, one of the guys over police to police tell me that uh, they, the uh, district attorney, uh, polled potential jurors and didn't select them unless they were Blue Lives Matter, cop lovers and bootlickers and all that stuff. And so, you know, uh, the jury was not blinded by the badge. They was the only ones to see uh, most of the evidence. And so they made uh, the decision that there was no crime committed and that the officer was not guilty 
of second degree murder because the evidence did not meet the threshold. And so therefore they could not convict because they felt that there was a reasonable reason that the cop feared for his life and other lives and uh, the other cop's lives. And so when he neutralized the threat uh, of Daniel Shaver acting real stupid, it's terrible that uh, when anyone dies, but you know, teach your kids not to be stupid. No one needs to die from stupidity. They had ordered the two people out of the room for over five minutes and they didn't come out. And uh, if the girl, she followed instructions, Shaver, if he had a followed instructions, and it doesn't matter if the cop was yelling at him, the, uh, the orders were very precise. And the cop wasn't yelling at him at first until he was mixed from not, uh, not following orders. And then right before he got shot, he went into series of following orders. So it gave the impression that he was starting to think right. And when he reached his hand behind his back the third time, after both hands the first time and then the right hand the second time, they felt that that was a reasonable uh, threat to them. So they acted. Immediately after Brailsworth was acquitted, police apologists took to Facebook to praise the cop killer and gloat in the death of an innocent father and husband. I haven't seen anybody gloat in no death, and I haven't seen anybody giving praise to the cop, and uh, and he's not a killer cop. People are just saying he's not a killer cop, and uh, you know, police to police, they take videos and edit them. The one that they uh, uh, got on Shaver is edited. Uh, they got another one on the big black guy that was shot, I think, two or three days ago. He was unarmed, but he was obviously a threat to the cops. And they got an edited video on him, too. They don't show all the video to put the context because that's the kind of people they are. Back to the article. How exactly can people claim Brailsford was justified in killing Daniel Shaver is a mystery to anyone who watched the video and is not entirely blinded by the thin blue line. Yeah, you have to say that there's some reason that we don't see it as you do to try to dismiss our arguments. Uh, but the fact of it is, a lot of people, even the juries, has watched the videos. They didn't see the one video, but they seen other videos. And uh, because there is a second video that even gives a better uh, angle of the shooting. And so then back to the article, the only possible explanation is a complete lack of empathy and the ability to view Daniel Schaefer as a human being. That is just stupid. Nobody... Uh, perceived Daniel uh, Shaver as not being a human being. He was just a human being that got too drunk and got too stupid and got scared and it wasn't the cops fault that he was drunk and scared. And the cops have a right to go home at night just like everybody else does. And just like me and you, we have uh, the legal right to neutralize a threat to our life, so do the cops because cop lives are valuable too. When the victim is dehumanized, as in the case of Shaver, people can logically view their life as disposable. To see proof of this logic, you need only look at the utter lack of concern and care for the millions of children currently being starved to death in Yemen or the hundreds of thousands of murdered civilians in Iraq and Afghanistan. These people have been constantly dehumanized by the mainstream media and their lives are seen as worthless to Americans. They are being systematically eliminated by the military industrial complex and Joe Sixpack couldn't care less. Wow, it's interesting uh, to find out that Police to Police and this uh, Free Thought Project is uh, also anti-military. Wow, I guess they must be way far left liberals, you know, and uh, nobody dehumanizes any Muslims over there or anything like that. And if you haven't heard, because Trump uh, uh, unleashed our military, ISIS is about done. Uh, General Mad Dog Mathis, I think it is, come out today and said that Iraq is about 
95% completely liberated now. Good for Donald Trump and good for the United States military. Uh, because ISIS, they even kill Muslims, y'all. So don't play no games with me. The same tactic is used domestically to sell the idea that uh, the police are all heroes and they can do no wrong. The ideology is beaten into consciousness of Americans ad nauseum. If a cop kills one, someone, then the person must have deserved it. Actually, no. Uh, just the other day, Walter Scott's killer was sentenced to 20 years because that was a bad shoot. Uh, each year, uh, I think on like maybe 13 uh, people, unarmed people have been shot this year. I don't know. I haven't looked at the numbers in a long time, but the Washington Post uh, tracks those numbers real good. And they're, a lib they're a liberal source, so they're a good source to go to. Next time I make one of these videos, I'll have my tabs lined up where I can show you some of these things that I'm referring to. But uh, the cops are heroes only in the sense that uh, they keep a civilization civilized. Without the cops, there are anarchies, and somebody has to do the job. Uh, these people, when I debate with them all the time, they talk about, well, there would be better. Anarchy would be better. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, because you're probably evil enough people that you want to be able to go kill whoever you want. And then if you can kill whoever might uh, avenge their death, well, then you just get away with it. And there's not 750 million cops, uh, 750,000 cops in America that might come and get you and find you and convict you and throw you away or even murder you like you did them. And so, uh, and whenever the cops kill people, uh, about... A dozen or two dozen a year, they don't deserve it. How else could police kill over a thousand people every year while most of society never even bat an eye? Uh, for 2016 and 2015, uh, it was less than a thousand, uh, according to FBI and the Washington Post. Uh, this play, this site is biased as hell. To see proof of this mindset, one need only look at Facebook page Blue Lives Matter and the comments on posts praising cop killers. Well, I haven't been to that site uh, in a long time. I'm uh, sub to them, uh, but I haven't seen any of their articles come across my feed. Uh, this is probably a real good article that I should actually read. Now, uh, here is uh, uh, some comments, I guess, from the article. Oh my God, all the police shootings, ambushes, etc. Yes, almost 40 cops have been killed by ambush in the last two years. Some of you have the audacity to criticize this officer. They thought this guy had a gun tucked in his shorts, and he reached behind his waist, you morons. If you haven't walked in the police's shoes, shut the hell up, wrote Mary in response to uh, Braille Worst Verdict. Now, does that sound to you? like they're praising the cops? Uh, not to me. Sounds like they're defending the cops because they uh, can see uh, that Shaver, unfortunately, did put the cops' lives in jeopardy. And uh, had he not even shot, uh, aimed his pellet gun at the people down in the pool, none of this would have happened. He would have got drunk, woke up the next day, and went back to his pest control job. And it's unfortunately, unfortunate that he behaved in the matter in the way that he did. To illustrate just how dehumanized some of the public's views are of Daniel Shaver, uh, was one person called him a perp to justify his murder. Uh, Shaver had committed no crime. He had perpetrated nothing. Well, uh, you know, it is a crime to point even a fake gun at people. Uh, you can't go around, you can't go to the mall with a fake BB, uh, uh, a fake pistol or a fake rifle and be pointing it at people. And you can't do that uh, out of a hotel room either. Uh, and if you do, you're likely to get shot. I mean, it happens every year. 
unfortunately, kids get shot because the parents don't teach them to not go around and point fake guns at cops because the cops have no way of knowing whether the guns are fake or not. So I guess here is the commenter that said that. Here's a, or no, here's, I think this is a pro-police to police article. This is Daniel Shaver. For almost two years, I've been trying to raise awareness of his death. I'm glad everyone is finally paying attention. Danny was a good guy, but that meant more to me was how good of a dad he was. He loved his girls. And that's exactly why it was unfortunate that, I mean, look at him. He looks like a, a damn good guy. He looks like an ordinary guy, just like all my friends. Uh, it's unfortunate that this happened. And uh, he don't look stupid, but he was definitely acting that stupid tonight. I mean, I've had uh, a, a crack man uh, rob me at a store, and when he started hollering at me, boy, I started paying attention. I was all peeled out one night and drinking real hard, and so was my friends. And my one friend got jealous because he thought I was screwing his girlfriend, and he thought about that, that about a lot of people. And he stuck a gun in my face, was shaking like this too, and hollering at me. And man, I got fucking sober just like that. And to my friend, hey, I was like, yes, sir, no, sir. And when that crackhead uh, robbed me, I dropped some bills on the floor and... I even said, sir, do you want me to pick those dollar bills up? Because I value my life, and I'm not going to act stupid, and you shouldn't either. Uh, so here we go again. Not only did the fans of Blue Life Matter fail to see Shaver, an innocent father who had done absolutely nothing illegal, which we've already established that he did, as the victim, but they actually thought Railers was the victim because he was fired. Uh... I don't know. I haven't thought about that, so I don't know if the officer should, uh, should have been fired or not. You know, he did have the uh, nefarious inscription on his gun that said, uh, fuck you or something like that, uh, and that was stupid. And But really, what does it matter? He could have bought that gun before he became a cop the way, uh, and the way it was. And uh, since the department didn't furnish him uh, an AR, you know, n nobody can tell him what he can have on his personal gun. And he passed the psychological test and fit the profile to become a cop. And so you can't, uh, I mean, really, what difference does it make unless you can prove uh, that the man was either unstable or had nefarious uh, reasons. Uh, I've seen people all day long say that the cops, whenever they, Whenever they got the call, they was looking to go kill somebody because cops love to kill people. And uh, so anyway, back to the article. Here's a quote. I guess it's uh, somebody from Facebook that they disagree with. Action always beats reaction. Why is it only cops understand this? If he wasn't obeying the lawful orders and was stupid enough to reach to his waist, then he got what he deserved. Well, I don't think he really deserved it. He was unfortunate. But he got what the police deserve because the police deserve uh, to be able to legally neutralize the threat that uh, a shaver reaching behind his back for the third time posed to them. Also, sounds like the police department threw this officer under the bus to save face. Sucks when your agency doesn't stand behind a good shoot. Seems to happen uh, way too much these days. Uh, actually, they probably got rid of them because of people like you uh, and the deal about the gun. I mean, the inscription on the gun. Need I say more? Y'all probably, some of y'all probably think so. Uh, uh, to the uh, person above sending a SWAT team to an innocent man's hotel room and murdering him in cold blood as he begged for his life is good. No, it's not. I'm glad to see that they at least did enough research to realize that it was a SWAT team. Uh, a lot of people aren't even uh, uh, recognizing that, and most people aren't even recognized that it was uh, a sergeant that was barking the orders, and the guy that shot Shaver uh, was not the one uh, giving the orders and hollering them out to Shaver. Notice how Daniel Shaver's name is not mentioned in any of the comments. Only the fact that he was a perp or a suspect 
This is no accident. If Shaver is seen as an innocent father who had committed no crime and was killed for no reason, the facade crumbles. You see, I've repeatedly referred to Daniel Shaver by his name. I did that all day long. And the people that I seen arguing, uh, making the same arguments as me, they also treated Daniel Shaver like a person. They didn't dehuman, dehumanize him. Uh, just a person that unfortunately did stupid behavior and it cost him and his family dearly. And that's a sad fucking thing because I don't think uh, nobody I know wants to see no kid grow up without a father. And uh, I would venture to say that none of the cops that were there that day desired that. To illustrate just how strong this blind support of police actual is, we can look at another post on the page, Blue Lives Matter, in which fans expressed their remorse for Michael Slager being sentenced to 20 years in prison. Well, I'm not going to do that because uh, Slager uh, obviously uh, killed Walter Scott. And then he went over there and threw his taser down and all that. Uh, he should have never been a cop, should never work as a cop again. And uh, 20 years... I'm quite happy with that. But let's see what uh, these people say. Completely innocent. The video doesn't show the fight where the suspect shot officer with taser gun leads that stick into his leg as suspect runs. If suspect held the taser, he could have still tased the officer at any point while running. Absolutely travesty of justice. Well, I didn't ever see... Uh, I thought I looked for all the complete videos on that case, but I never did see the officer deploy his taser gun against Scott. And so here's the next comment. So sorry for this police officer. I don't believe he should have gotten such a stiff sentence. It worries me that a wrong message is being sent to thousands of other police officers in this country to not enforce our country's laws. Have y'all heard of the Baltimore effect? Because of all the false... Uh, narrative, bullshit, Black Lives Matter narrative, people like police to police and all this. Uh, because of that rhetoric, uh, cops are hesitant. Uh, crime is on the rise and uh, uh, cops are hesitant to kill, uh, especially white cops. Uh, really, any cop is going to be judged as white uh, or judged as guilty, no matter if they're black or Hispanic or Asian. Whenever someone gets shot, especially if it's a black guy, the general, the uh, the media, the mainstream media, and the general people on the left, all the social justice warriors, all the black supremacists like Tariq Nasheed, Sean King, all these people, they automatically assume the worst. And these cops get tried in the, in the public uh, court of opinion uh, before they are even judged by the court of law. And... Uh, you know, someone said, well, uh, they didn't decommission uh, the officer, so he's going to be able to go to work for another department. But no, uh, he's probably not going to be able to go to work for another department. And he's probably, he might even get death threats and have to go uh, into hiding because of this. I mean, it's ridiculous some of the things people say. Back to the article. Not only is Stephen... Uh, Stephen fabricating fiction to justify Walter Scott murder, but to highlight the sheer lack of thought in the above statement, we only need to point out the first two words, completely innocent. How is Michael Slayer completely innocent if he actually pled guilty? I agree. They actually said something I agree with. Now for the good news. Despite the Blue Lives Matter page celebrating the death of innocent fathers at the hands of killers with badges, uh, I'm surprised they haven't adopted Tariq Nasheed's terminology of race soldiers. Uh, so anyway, uh, a large portion of American society refuses to buy into the propaganda. Uh, yeah, y'all's propaganda. But a lot of people... Uh, uh, have bought into y'all's kind of propaganda uh, because uh, the FBI has reported uh, this year that blue li Black Lives Matter, the media, and sites like this have contributed to the increase of cops getting killed. 
and whenever you uh, uh, deal with these people, like at uh, police to police, they say, well, shouldn't any car, any people get killed by the cops and things like that. They expect the cops to be perfect when they're not perfect. And and they'll say, well, if cops will quit mass, one guy said, if cops will quit mass murdering people, uh, they wouldn't get hunted down. And, well, it's the false rhetoric that's saying cops are hunting black guys and that cops enjoy killing people that is uh, actually leading to more cops getting killed, and that is causing them to be more hesitate, hesitant and is causing crime to increase in some of the most crime-ridden areas in the country. As the following post on Reddit shows, which subsequently went uber viral with 72,000 upvotes, not everyone thinks Railsworth is a hero. Bitch cop upvote this so the world can see what a bitch ass cop pussy cunt fucker cop sucking murderer looks like. And right there's the vitriol. A lot of stuff that you will see at Police to Police. That's why I'm starting this new series, uh, Policing, Police to Police. And uh, one day I might even go through and just get some comments and show all the shitty ass comments. I mean, it's almost as fucked up of a page as world star hip hop. It's fucking ridiculous. And uh, there are undoubtedly brave men and women who put on that uniform every day and do good. However, blindly worshiping the police state and believing that all these men and women are heroes and can do no wrong can have detrimental effects on society. Yeah, that would be uh, true if what you're saying is actually true, but we don't live in a police state. Uh, that's a stupid fucking thing to say. And nobody blindly worships the police or the state. Uh, you know, they, when they're not calling you a boot licker, they're calling you a fucking government lover. And uh, I got called a communist today because I back the government. I love the government. And uh, these are probably a bunch of liberals uh, calling a uh, an average conservative that is against the far right and the far left uh, uh, accusing them of being communist. When I think communist is uh, about the dead, communism is about the deadliest idea, even more deadly than uh, Islam. Well, almost as deadly as Islam. They're about the same. Uh, the not guilty verdict for the Mesa police officer Philip Railsworth and subsequent celebration of Daniel Shaver's death are two glaring examples of these effects. Oh, it's a bunch of bullshit. Let's see who wrote this article. Matt Agarus. Matt Agarus is an honorably discharged veteran of the USMC and former intelligence operator direct, directly tasked by the NSA. Okay, I made a comment. I, I forgot a comment that I might want that I wanted to make here. Uh, uh, nobody says that cops cannot do no wrong. Uh, everybody I know acknowledges that cops are humans and they make mistakes. Uh, perpetrators, suspects, they make mistakes like Shaver did, and people needlessly die. But whenever cops interact with cops, seven hundred. I mean, with citizens 735 million times a year, some of those are going to go bad, and very few of them are going to go bad. The vast majority uh, of the less than 1,000 people that are killed by cops every year, it's justified uses of lethal force because they were resisting, not complying, and uh, had become a threat to the officers involved. Cops don't kill people for selling CDs or for Lucy's or for Skittles in, in an in a Arizona drink. Uh, that's all a bunch of bullshit. Uh, I seen a black guy today that talk, was talking about police brutality, and he said, but I think we, referring to the blacks, should start get together and start committing a whole bunch of hate crimes. And we should be walking into the popo stations and taking care of this. And there's going to be a war. And they've been talking this shit for a long time, you know. There's 400 million guns in uh, America, and most of them belong to white conservatives. 
And so 13% of the population would be suicidal if they uh, uh, started a race war with 63% of the population. And uh, like a lot of astute blacks have uh, uh, noticed uh, that basically what would happen, I seen this one guy say what would happen was when the white, white people uh, rolled into the hood uh, and said, get your ass in the back of the truck, you'd be getting your ass back in the truck because those white people train their kids from this big and y'all guys can't even hit the side of a barn because y'all hold y'all's guns like this and all that stuff. But uh, most of the time, whenever you look at one of these incidences of, of so-called police brutality, it fought, involves a, uh, a black guy. And, uh, you know, so even though more cops get killed, uh, more whites get killed by cops than uh, blacks, you hardly ever see anybody make a big deal when uh, a, a cop kills a white guy. How many white guys can you name that have been killed by the cops that have been in the media? Uh, because those don't happen. And whenever you look at uh, the disparity between the black and white crime, yes, uh, twice as many whites get killed as blacks, but there's five times as many whites, so there's a disparity. But whenever you look at the, uh, the, the crime uh, by race reports released every year by the FBI uh, and sources uh, that like have done uh, studies that whenever they do general surveys, they ask, uh, have you ever uh, been involved in a crime, had a crime perpetrated? against you and who did it, who do you think, what race did it, and all this. So it lines up that whenever you look at all the statistics of black guys, uh, young black guys, uh, mostly in urban settings, uh, they commit about 10 times more violence than uh, your average white guy. And so whenever you look at all the numbers, probably twice as many black guys uh, should get shot by the numbers as actually does. But that's not true because especially white cops are hesitant to shoot black guys. And uh, studies have shown that, uh, that minority cops are actually quicker to pull the trigger. And uh, this is even more so nowadays. So if you'll look, maybe tomorrow I'm going to uh, look at this site from by police the police and the Free Thought Project. The NRA silent as cops murder innocent man because he legally held a pellet gun an hour earlier. No mention that he was pointing the fucking thing at people in the pool. He just didn't hold it. But anyway, and here it says uh, the Naf National Rifle Association claims its purpose is to defend the Second Amendment rights of America but is ignoring a man who was murdered by the police. Uh, what does really police brutality have to do with the Second Amendment? I mean, uh, it doesn't affect people's ability to have guns. I mean, Daniel Shaver might have had real guns at home. I mean, uh, and how's the NRA anyway tied to this? It's a bunch of bullshit. But we'll look at that uh, article maybe later. Uh, subscribe and like below and comment. Uh, I'll be doing uh, more of these policing, police to police uh, videos. I'll probably do another one on uh, the Shaver case. Uh, and I'll be uploading several more videos on the Shaver case in the next couple of days. And so subscribe. Uh, go to my uh, website, screwyourfeelings.com, and uh, uh, check out the resources there. And y'all have a good day, and God bless. And blue lives do matter because blue lives come in all colors. And they keep civilization civilized. And uh, for that, I'm thankful because uh, I don't want chaos. I want civility in my civilization. Y'all have a good day and God bless.